Hey, what is up? And welcome to CineTracer version 0.62. Today we're going to check out the virtual camera and how this thing works with the new update. So I put it into the hotbar, I'm pressing one, and it's a weird one, look at that. It's in like kind of an odd place already. That's because it's a weird camera. But anyway, let's hop into it. We're gonna click it right now. And what you need to do is have one of these. Um, definitely the Vive Pro controller works. The regular Vive should work. Even Oculus controller should be working. And maybe Quest Link, I haven't tried it, I have one. Index definitely works. Anything that Steam VR thinks is a motion controller or VR tracked motion controller should be working. You're gonna have to let me know if you find one that isn't. It is tricky to support them all, but I'm working towards that. Anyway, get one of these connected. If you can play a regular VR game and it's connected and it shows up in Steam VR, then everything should be fine. So. Uh, we're going to go up to Update Tracked Devices, and you'll see that one of my controllers shows up. It will find two controllers at max, and if you have one Vive Tracker connected, that should show up here. I haven't tested that in a while, but it should work with Vive Trackers. I think controllers work a little bit nicer uh, for this particular use case. So you can pick your sensor size. This will be important for mixed reality later if you've been following on that front. So that's the camera I use downstairs. If we were trying to match that camera, this is what we would do, but we're not currently. So what I'm going to do is click on the number one and all of a sudden, ooh, floaty like this. We have um, the motion mimicked on our camera over there. So I'm going to hit F and jump into it. So now you'll see that as I move the motion controller like this, we can go sideways like that. I can tilt down, I can tilt up. Uh, we're getting the corresponding movement. Now, the big difference with this camera from the last one is that it's a little smoother, right? Uh, if you've done this before, you'll know, you'll you'll kind of know that like if you're holding it like this, it, it has a lot of jitter. This actually has a mild amount of smoothing in it. You can't change how much smoothing's in it yet, but in the future you will, especially for mixed reality. Again, you don't want any smoothing, but for just handheld like this, uh, you almost don't even need a mount. If you just keep your hand steady, this will take out a lot of the jitter for you like that. So one kind of secret thing that you can do here is, um, I'm trying to remember the keys actually. Uh, there it is. Okay, so eight only, you need a number pad, right? This is kind of hidden functionality. But if you want to scoot your view a little bit closer to the camera, you can use eight. I think it's nine goes up. This is number pads. Seven on the number pad goes down. And let's see if this works. Four and six on the number pad. So you kind of can arrow around and get a closer view of the camera uh, if you want that, you know? And this kind of behind the scenes view like this. So this is kind of fun to have it set up like this. So, um, you know, you can obviously strap this to a handheld rig and then go like that or put it on a steady cam or a gimbal or anything you want. Um, people have used segways, <laughs> you might have seen that video. Uh, and so we can hop into this camera here and all the controls are the same. So I'm gonna use my mouse for this. So. Uh, I don't really want to map controls to this. I used to do that. I'm just going to kind of leave them the same as before. So it's a little bit awkward for now, but I'm going to do that. I'm going to hit E. I'll open up a bit. I'm going to hold left click. So we're going to focus on her kind of no matter what. Oops. And uh, something to point out here, I'm going to hit V again. If I use uh, WASD, we will move the entire what's called camera stage around. So it's not, this can move back and forth in physical space like this. But then you can move the whole camera stage like that with WASD again. And I believe the mouse will turn the entire stage. So again, you have uh, basically pan on the camera with the controller, right? This is like your local rotations. And this is your like kind of like full rotation. I don't want to get into Unreal Engine terms here, but uh, I think you'll be able to intuit th uh, what that is. And you're not really supposed to move those too much. Um, you kind of, well, that's not true at all. So here, l let's move on to the next part. So with the fact that you can move this stage, what you can do now is, um, I'm going to hold two like this, and that's what going to be our second mark. Then I'm going to come back here. I'm going to hold one. Mm -hmm. Now, if I hit two, we're going to smoothly move forward just like the other camera systems, but I can pan and tilt like this during it. So this is pretty similar to being on a dolly sitting on a dolly, but then being handheld. Very common right now. It's, it's a cool look, right? 
where when you're actually walking backwards, you're going to get a lot of this. Unless you're a Steadicam operator, you got like magic feet or some sort of stabilizer. Uh, this is still pretty common. is to dolly in but be handheld for just a little bit of movement. So this, this kind of replicates that sort of feeling here. So uh, a demo I did a while back was something like this. So we're like looking up and rotated this way on the roll. And then we'll just kind of level out back the other way like this. So this is a pretty accurate way. Like I'm trying to go handheld like this. I have handheld rigs. You've probably seen them, but um, you know, the idea with the smooth camera is that because not everyone has a handheld camera. It's like you could just give this to anybody and be like, okay, like you just point the controller and, and it smooths it out. So uh, let me know what you think about this. If you're using the tracked camera, uh, the idea was to add a little bit of smoothing and I can make that adjustable in settings, how much smoothing we add. And then when you're doing mixed reality for like the future, kind of if you're watching this video, you're probably maybe wondering about mixed reality. What you'll do is you'll put this on top of your real camera. Uh, I'll have you measure the offset it is from the sensor. And then you'll obviously have to input the sensor size and then the uh, focal length. And then you can composite the live action with this behind it. And it'll actually match fairly well, depending on the scene. I mean, it's not going to be like professional mixed reality, but it's going to be pretty good. You'd be surprised. So uh, we'll show that in the future. It's, it's almost ready to kind of be seen. But this is essentially the step right before that is getting a solid V cam. So I'm really happy with this. It's unified with the other cameras. Again, all the controls are pretty much the same. The autofocus, the sensor, everything. Uh, except now you can move around, you can walk, you can dolly. Uh, you have this kind of cool behind the scenes view. And then you can look through the camera as well. So I can scoot up here. Um, we're autofocusing to her. I'm going to zoom in a bit like this. And yeah, that's, that's pretty fun. Uh, and even with uh, no rig like this, I still might make the trigger focus. I'm not sure. I guess I, guess I could still do that. But this is our handheld camera feel for uh, pre -vis, if you like, or for what will be mixed reality and then virtual production if you were using, say, one of our face cap actors and actually trying to film a final piece with it like this. So that is the update for the tracked camera. Pop back here. And uh, it is the precursor. Is this still tracking? It is. Even if I'm not controlling it, it still tracks it. That's pretty funny. Um, it's also the precursor to any mixed reality uh, virtual production type stuff we're going to do. It's all going to be based around uh, Vive trackers for now and Vive controllers and any, any mixed reality. I'm sorry, any virtual reality system will we'll work. Uh, and then depending on interest, uh, we might try to integrate with some of the high-end tracking systems, but those are relatively expensive and you should probably just be working with Unreal Engine at that point. But however, if you have a consumer VR system and basically any old camera, it doesn't have to be SDI for this workflow, it can be pretty much any camera, uh, you'll be able to do mixed reality in CineTracer hopefully by the end of the year, that sort of thing. Okay, so that's the update on the tracked camera, the VCAM. Let me know what you think uh, in the comments on uh, YouTube. I'll probably post this whole video to Instagram TV as well, just for feedback. And I'll see you on the next update.